Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the geometric series. The geometric series is very similar to the geometric sequences that we've previously talked about, which were the terms um, share a common ratio between the terms. We'll get into there, those, but before we do that, I just want to talk about a notation thing about changing of the indices of our sigma sum notation. And the reason I bring this up now is, A, it's going to be important in the future when you're manipulating these infinite series and trying to evaluate or find the convergence or divergence. But also, specifically for this example here, when I was looking at multiple textbooks, they use a slightly different notation. And I just want to offer you What's the translation between those different notations? So let's just look at a, an infinite series here. Uh, on this case, I'll go from, let's say from i equals two uh, to infinity, and let's make something up here. Let's say four and then times one fifth to uh, the i minus four. And again, what I'm about to do is a little bit arbitrary, but I just want to show you the power of manipulating these if you're trying to put it in a specific form, which you're going to have to do at times. In this case right here, let's say that I don't like that this starts at i equals two. Some property I'm using has, it needs to start at zero. What I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use a new, I'm going to use a substitution of the indice i here, and I'm going to say m equals i minus two. What that substitution will allow me to do is change the index of this summation as long as I change it here and here and change it into an index of m. And here's how that would look. So simply what I ask is, well, if I started at two, what is m when i is 2? Well, if i is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So if I use the index of m in my definition of m, m would start at 0. And importantly, what I need to do is change every instance of i into m using this relationship right here. So we have 4 times 1 fifth raised to the i minus 4. So if I have i minus 4 right here, what I could do is manipulate this by subtracting 2 from both sides or you know, also I could do is just add to is that m plus 2 equals i. Maybe this is an easier way of doing this right here. So if I plug this equivalent expression in for i, I get m plus 2 minus 4. I won't show that simple arithmetic right there or algebra. What I would get is m minus 2. The important statement I just want to make right here is that this infinite series and this infinite series are exactly the same. If you look at the first term, in this case right here, what we get is m is 0, so we get this exponent of negative 2. If we go up here, the first term of this infinite series, if we plug a 2 in here, we get 2 minus 4 to get negative 2. So we know they both start at negative 2, they iterate one at a time up to infinity. On to the geometric series. So the geometric series is a series of this form right here. Importantly, again, this is exactly the same as the geometric sequence. Not exactly, but very similar. Where we have this value r, that's the, the common ratio between the terms. Importantly here, we call r the ratio of the series. And what we want to analyze in this case is for what values of R does the geometric series converge and for what values does it diverge? First and foremost, what I want to identify is the nth partial sum, just to kind of write it out generally. So S sub n, the nth partial sum of any geometric series, uh, given this form right here, will be A plus AR plus AR squared, all the way down to AR plus AR to the N minus one. And again, the common ratio. So each term right here is just multiplying by another value of R, which is the ratio of the series. We only go to the N minus one because we have the subtraction of one right here. So when we get to N, we plug in N, be N minus one for that very end right there. Um, one other manipulation, because it will make my life easier here in a second is, what we could always do is factor out the common value, the common factor of A between all of these. So if we wanted to, we can write it like this with just uh, the A factored out right here. That's also that constant multiple rule that we saw earlier. We can factor out that constant multiple, but we'll just write this down again, just when things get a little crazy, it makes our lives a little bit easier. 
All right, let's start by tackling the easiest possible case where our R, our common ratio between each term is just one. What that would mean is that S sub N would look like A plus, and now we've got to multiply A by one to get A plus A plus all the way down to the nth term, which is A. What we have, so in this case, when our R or the ratio on the series is one, we multiply by one each step. We just get a bunch of this constant of A right here. And in fact, we have N of them. And so S sub N is the same thing as A time N, times N or N times A. Well, there we go. We have an easy definition for the nth partial sum. And so if we take the limit of that, so the limit as n goes to infinity, this isn't super exciting. So n times a or a times n, however we want to write it, this as n goes to infinity, this diverges to infinity. Thus, we know in the case where r equals 1, it diverges. All right, we took care of the easiest case. Let's now figure out what happens when r is not equal to 1. So what we start was, again, with this basic definition of given any geometric sequence, what the nth partial sum looks like right here. And then we're going to do this beautifully simple, difficult to see, but when you see it work out how awesome this is, what I'm going to do now is multiply both sides of this equation by 1 minus r. So if I multiply both sides by 1 minus r here, then what I'm going to do is distribute this or multiply the 1 minus r by this summation right here. Now, I'm hoping you're saying, Mike, that looks crazy. That looks really tough to do, but it's not really because I just have two terms here. I mean, this is could be an insanely, well, it's an arbitrary number of terms, but importantly, this is only two terms, so I'll distribute both of them through individually, and you're just going to see how beautifully this works out. So I have 1 minus r times the nth partial sum. I have this a right here. Okay, so let's do this. If I multiply each of these terms by one, nothing happens. Actually, it just makes a copy of this. So I'll write this down right here. Plus r squared plus yada yada plus r to the n minus one. And then if I multiply this by minus r or minus multiplied by r, it's gonna be easier for me to keep that subtraction in my head on the outside here. Multiply each of these terms by r. So that first term will be r plus r squared plus r to the third. All the way down, this last term, r to the n minus 1, times an r actually would give me r to the n. And then the beauty of finding the formula for the nth partial sum is right here. This might look like a lot, but what you'll notice is what we have is we have the positive versions of these terms here, and we're subtracting away almost the exactly the same thing. Importantly, if we have an r, a plus r here, but we're subtracting r, those terms cancel, the r squareds cancel, the r to the thirds would cancel, all the way down to the r to the n minus 1, which is the term that comes right before this. The only things that survive are this 1, minus r to the n. So this is, I always think that this is like one of the most beautiful uh, proofs right here for the nth partial sum. So this is 1 minus r times the nth partial sum equals a times 1 minus r to the n. And then what I'm going to do is divide both sides by the 1 minus r. Importantly right here, since, and this is why we did this first case, by the way, is that since r is not equal to 1, we can do this division without dividing by 0, right? Because 1 minus r is only 0 if r is equal to 1, but we took care of that separately. So in this case right here, what we have is the nth partial sum is a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. This is an incredibly important formula that lets us attack any geometric series. Importantly to say, this always happens when we're talking about these kind of more complicated topics. Somebody out there might be thinking, how the heck would I have known to multiply by 1 minus r? You're not expected to know that, but now that you've seen it, you hopefully could 
recreate it or at least understand this is the formula for the nth partial sum of any geometric ser series of this form. And then beautifully, the question of whether a geometric series converges or diverges is boiled down to the question of what is the nature of this formula for the nth partial sum as n goes to infinity? So I won't write in different values of r right here, but if r is a, a larger number, like 3, 4, 500, as n goes to infinity, this term is going to explode and it's going to diverge. But if n, if r is a small number, like 1 half or even negative 1 half, as you take numbers between negative one and one and raise them to infinity, they actually become infinitesimally small. Or in other words, this term right here, r to the n, this will go to zero if the absolute value of r is less than one, and r to the n will diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than one. So we'll have this explosion, this unbounded explosion of this term. If r is greater than one, if it's less than one, this term will go to zero so that we can get a value from this. So what does this mean? It means that we know the nth partial sum. We know the nature of the nth partial sum given the value of r. This is, the again, the only term that matters. The rest of these are constants. But a geometric series will converge if r, or the absolute value of r, is less than 1, and it will diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. And importantly, since we have this generalized nth partial sum for our geometric series, if we have an r value that's between negative 1 and 1, or has an absolute value of less than 1, we don't only, not only know that it converges, we can evaluate what it converges to given this formula right here. All right, just to ground us with a real quick example, we're being asked to evaluate the following geometric series if it converges. Just to ground us right here, 3 is our constant a value. The ratio of our geometric series is 1 half. That's beautiful. What we know is if our absolute value of our common our ratio is less than 1, we know it converges. Hell yeah. So it converges. Check mark. Doesn't get much easier than that. And then we can evaluate it by using this formula right here. So we know uh, that S sub n in this case, or a value is 3. And then we have here 1 minus 1 half to the nth power over 1 minus 1 half. Then all we need to do is find out the limit of this nth partial sum when n goes to infinity. And so we just take the limit as n goes to infinity of 3, 1 minus 1 half to the n over 1 half. Beautifully, as said previously, we have right here the only variable part in this limit is this one half to the nth power. As you take one half to the nth power, you end up going to zero. So this term right here goes to zero, which means that we have the uh, value of three times, this will be three times one, which is just three over one half, which equals six. So for our geometric series, the hard work was done in that first little proof for the nth partial sum. We have this idea of convergence given a geometric series. In this case, again, we say, yes, heck yeah, it converges. Why? It's because that ratio of our series is the absolute value of that is less than one. And then we have our definition of the nth partial sum. Then we just take the limit as n goes to infinity to find the value of our infinite geometric series.